Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we've got the 2022 Kia Carnival. This is completely redesigned. They've gone away from the Sedona name. They've been using the Carnival name worldwide for a little while now, but here in the US it was the Sedona until this year. Many people have asked me about this. It's been kind of surprising. I've gotten a lot of attention in it for some reason, but it is all new with a very crossover look and i think that's what catches people's eye it does have a 3.5 liter v6 and let's go ahead and take a look under the hood there is that 3.5 liter v6 with 290 horsepower which they claim is best in class and also class leading 262 foot-pounds of torque. You can do 0 to 60, Ikea claims, in 7.4 seconds. And it's pretty fast, but throttle's really jumpy. We'll show you that during the drive portion. It does have plenty of power paired to the 8-speed automatic and does quite well. Here inside, it's very nicely equipped. This is still a hard surface for those that like to rest their elbow up there. But the trim and the leather and everything is very nicely put together and it just looks really good. And Kia has been doing, you know, of course, with the Tellurides kind of when it started, the new Sorento. And now in the Carnival minivan, it Kia has really upped their game as far as the quality interior feel goes. And of course, it comes with all the standard safety features. You've got the like lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, pedestrian alert. It's got all, all the safety features are kind of standard on this one. Um, it does have fake fog lights, so they're an extra set of driving lights. They can all be on with the headlights on. And this one's power everything, so the two doors and the rear hatch, and you can hit that switch and turn it off. And this one is also, that's a lane departure alert when you pair it with this one. It's kind of a self-driving, but it does do this a lot. Um, it's not a super smooth self-driving thing. And when I say self-driving, you still got to keep your hand on the wheel and make adjustments. But this tries to keep you centered in the lane by steering for you. It does have some fun features that are becoming more common now. It's got the... Uh, speaker system where you can talk to your passengers in the back and it plays your voice through the speakers so i can just barely hear it i'm sure the camera's not picking it up and it also has this passenger view where you can see the rear seat and you can you can zoom in and look in different spots so i have the the furthest seat the third row seat is down but you could zoom in and see the passengers there as well and I do like the split screen so you can have two different things up. And generally I'm on like the nav and the radio or the other way around. Um, anyway, really enjoy the infotainment system. Easy to use, it's not very complex. There's not a ton of things you can do in there when compared to like a Mercedes or something, but it is easy to use. Uh, quite the simple system and then of course you have actual knobs for that's the volume this is to change the station and then actual physical buttons for all your climate control seat heaters here you push it up to turn it on and then down or up to change the setting and then if you go all the way down there's the seat ventilation same thing on the passenger side it does have the parking cameras and all the different views right now that's the front nope that's the rear view if i shift to drive it goes to the front view but uh, it has all that for easy parking wireless charging here a bunch of extra usb ports uh, it does have the electronic parking brake with the auto hold when you pull up to a stop you just push on the brake and it will hold it for you, you let off the brake car won't roll forward until you hit the brake or gas again does have various drive modes and I've been hanging out in eco mode, not for better gas mileage, but for better drivability. So Kia claims this thing is fast and they kind of do that by making the throttle extremely sensitive. So it it is a pretty fast vehicle for a minivan. It's a little faster than you would expect, but it's hard to 
lead from a stop smoothly in any mode except for normal mode. Smart mode, sometimes it seemed to work, sometimes it didn't. So I've just been hanging out in eco mode and it's been fine. Uh, overall, I much prefer driving this on the freeway compared to around town. So around town, like I said, the jumpy throttle, it's just not as smooth as I'd like it to be from a stop. But on the freeway, this is a great vehicle. It's got plenty of power to pass people when needed. Cruise is just fine. Eh, a little bit of road noise, but you have a big open cabin, lots of big windows, and um, so you do get some road noise from that. And you do have the ability to have the windows locked as they are now and still roll them down. And all four of them are automatic from the driver's seat. Let's go ahead and take a look in the second row. So first thing, I should have shown it, but opening the doors, you can just hit this button and that will open the power sliding doors. When you're inside, you can hit that button there. The seats have various levers on them. You can use this one to recline. This one will tilt and slide. And one thing I do not like are these screens. They don't come off and they're kind of big and in the way. When I had a rear seat, rear facing car seat here, it was hitting the screen so much so that I couldn't put it in, even though this seat's all the way back and that one is where I sit when I'm driving, uh, how I had like it adjusted when I'm driving. So I would have to either scoot really far forward or move it to the center seat, which is actually what I did. So I moved the rear facing car seat here to the center. There are power points here on the back, seat backs and then, um, one 15 volt outlet and another 12 volt outlet and also when you're in the driver's seat and if you need to adjust the passenger seat you can reach over and do that really easily both the angle of the recline and the sliding it back and forth and there are the controls so the passenger on the right side of the vehicle has the controls for the climate control for the rear two rows there are vents up above, which I much prefer to the vents down here. Also, there is your camera that you use to view the passengers in the rear seats. And you can actually push the button here to do voice commands from the rear seat. So that might be annoying for when you have kids you know, that are old enough to reach up there and start messing with the system while you're driving. This middle seat is awkward. Um, it's nice to have you have the armrest the cup holders phone holders there um let me grab my phone mine's a little bit large at least for the front one but you can drop a phone down in there and holds that for you uh there are cup holders in the doors as well but the awkward part of this seat is there's a floor mat here but you can actually slide this middle row all the way. Let me throw that out of the way. So you can slide this middle one all the way to the back. And I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. Sorry, let me flip it up. I'm sure this camera angle has been great for you guys, but there we go. So maybe he's got three kids and one of them's annoying. The other two, well, you don't want the annoying one behind the other two because then I'll keep bothering them. But anyway, you can separate your kids with that, I guess, and still have them buckled, but not have to raise up the rear seats. I don't know. That was kind of a funny feature to me. And then, of course, this middle row has a removable middle console seat here. So uh, let me fold this other one down to get it out of the way. And you can pull this tab right here. Got the wrong one, that's the wrong one. Pull this tab down here and you can remove this middle seat entirely so you can have a pass through if that's what you're looking for. Uh, let's go ahead and move into the third row. So to get into the third row normally, and there you go, hitting that screen. So to move into the third row normally, tilt and slide, and again, it hits the screen. 
I just, uh, those screens are not my favorite. They, they need to figure something else out. And you would just climb in through there to get to it. We'll show you from the back. So again, this cargo mat covers those anchor points for the seats. Let's do the little one, so it'll be easier. And you just lift this handle, pull it forward, and set it up. And then you can adjust how far it's reclined from that as well. So it's uh, easy enough to use. Tons of storage down here. There is no spare tire. You do have a flat repair system back here, however, and it shows you how to use it all to plug in your tire, pump it up, add in the, the uh, flat repair, and then there's a jack if you need it. So anyway, it's got all the stuff here, all the tools, everything back in here. So whatever you need for fixing a flat tire, you kind of have it there. I prefer having a spare tire. Uh, it just makes things a little bit better, a little bit easier. But there are hooks for a cargo net, or I guess you could hang your groceries on those hooks as well. Grocery hooks here. And on this side, I mean, it's the same thing. If that seat were up, you'd have all those <clears throat> same ones. There's a big storage compartment there. And this one, it's really hard to see down in there, but it's got like a false floor you can take out. And there's a little bit more storage underneath there. Not exactly sure what that a little bit of additional storage is for, but it's there. Also in the third row, you do get window shades, just like you do in the second row which can be nice for sure. So again, when you have this cargo format, it covers up all of these anchor points for the rear seat. It does make it a little bit of a pain for <clears throat> setting up the seats. You gotta take this out every time. Other than that, it's really not too bad to use. This minivan has a lot of nice features, a lot of safety features. It does not have optional all-wheel drive yet. Hopefully Kia can do that in the future. There are no hybrid motors or anything yet either. I'm sure all of that will be coming for a more efficient and better traction vehicle for those in bad weather. I expect to see that in the future from Kia. So driving around town, this thing handles really well. It remains pretty flat in the corners. It's got good power so you can jump into traffic and go without having to worry about being too slow and cutting people off. And overall, it's a pretty good city car. Again, as I've mentioned, that throttle is the only issue. Just being a little jumpy, maybe if I had you know a month with it instead of a week, I'd get used to the throttle and be able to do a little bit better. But as it is right now, compared to many of the other vehicles I've driven, it just is a little bit more sensitive than I would normally want. Doing zero to 60 is a little bit of an exercise in throttle control, so because it is so jumpy off the line, it'll spin the tires, turn on traction control, and hurt your zero to 60 time. So we're gonna see what we can do. I'm just gonna flat foot it, and three, two, one, go. So, yeah, I mean, for a minivan, that's really quick. Uh, for a sports car, that's pretty slow, but, you know, that's not bad. Most minivans, you don't expect to go this fast, and as I mentioned, it does have a stiffer suspension. It handles really well, but you don't feel it a ton in the ride. I mean, the ride is a tiny bit stiff, but uh, it's empty right now. You load it up with family, with all your gear. That should smooth the ride out, and really I bet it's an excellent drive when loaded to every day you know a couple car seats got the family in there got stroller or whatever else you normally take with you I bet it, it weighs it down just enough to smooth out the slight stiffness that I'm feeling now and it does have the manual shift mode if you want to do that on the shift lever but ultimately <clears throat> not a bad vehicle for driving around town i'm not gonna have a chance well maybe i'll see if i can get this out on the freeway 
and we'll film it on the freeway, but really it's smooth, it's fairly quiet, it's controlled, the good stiff suspension makes it handle. I mean, it just, it sticks to the road so much better than you'd expect. And it really does have a driving feel that, yeah, a little bit better than the other, other minivans on the market. Not as good as the maybe Durango or something like that, which is all but a minivan. Uh, but so much usable space in here. If you've got a family and never looked at a minivan, I recommend doing so. They've improved so much over the years, really gotten much better to drive. They handle better, they're more powerful. The suspension is just not floaty like it used to be, but you still get a decent ride. So if you're in the market for a vehicle and you've got a family, be sure to check out the minivan. So much easier to use and uh, easier to get in and out of, easier for kids to get in and out of than most crossovers and SUVs. And if you're not going to be needing the off-road capability or towing capability of a SUV, then a minivan might be what you should be driving. Ultimately, people don't like the looks of most minivans. This one does overcome a lot of that. It's definitely a sportier looking van. It looks more like a crossover, which crossovers recently have been looking like minivans, so I don't know which way it's going now. But uh, ultimately, Kia has done an excellent job with the design, both aesthetically and the dynamics of how it drives. Here we are on the S-curves. I am in sport mode, but yeah, not a big deal. Two foot of driving here. And this corner is super tight. Man, impressive how well that thing sticks. I got a tiny bit of oversteer there, I felt like. That was weird. Um, on the brake. On the throttle, it's pretty neutral. I wow, it's uh more neutral than you would expect. Overall, this, the steering really is so much more controlled. Even getting on the throttle, I expected understeer right away, but man, it was pretty neutral. Overall, that thing handles really well for a minivan. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures review of this 2022 Kia Carnival. It is a pretty nice ride, drives fairly smooth on road. The throttle is a bit sensitive, but if you use eco mode, it helps to subdue that a little bit. Overall, and I really enjoy driving it. There's a lot of power, you get up and go and you can pass people easily on the freeway. The eight speed auto shifts really smoothly and plenty of functionality and room inside. I wouldn't say it's the best in class uh, for interior accommodations. Uh, the Chrysler definitely does better than that. And the Toyota Sienna may be a little bit better than this, but uh, as far as the driving dynamics, this one probably has the best driving dynamics, except for that extremely sensitive throttle. Anyway, if you liked what you saw, be sure to ring the bell and subscribe. Ring the bell so you get notifications. Give me a thumbs up and comment down below. If you didn't like it, be sure to comment down below and let me know why. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.